Can you tell? Good evening. Uh, is it good evening or good afternoon? Whatever it is, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. We, uh, we are here again. We want to start with uh, a short, maybe, presentation in the context of the God series again. So we thank you, all our viewers. And we pray that God will continue inspiring us and teaching us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to talk about the four M's of, uh, of religion. The four M's of what? Of religion. And number one is morals or manners. And number two is materialism or money. And number three is magic or miracles. And number four is methodology. Now these are the hallmarks of, uh, of, of any religion by definition and practice. These are the, uh, the, the four hallmarks. This is how you tell that you are part of a religion or you're exercising it. You tell by these four hallmarks or, or characteristics or, or elements, therefore. Uh, so, religion teaches morals or manners, the do's and don'ts. And then, on uh, such a teaching, they attach goods. Every religion will tell you that this is this is how God uh, requires you to behave. Okay, requires you to behave. Maybe next time we'll come back here with the three Bs. We also have that. We also have that. But for now, let's focus on these. So it teaches you morals and uh, and manners. Now. And to tell you that you need God to have manners and morals. Well, I'm here to tell you that you don't need God, okay, for morals and manners. In fact, it was Apostle Paul who said it in Romans chapter 2, verse 14, that even the Gentiles who do not know the law that were given to us by God behave and do the things in the very law. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So therefore, stop thinking that uh, you are good mannered because of your religion. There are people who are more good mannered or well behaved than you are without your God. What you need for 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 manners, okay? You you just need a good culture. So these are the four Bs, eh? of, uh, I mean the four M's of, uh, of every religion. It teaches morals and, and manners. But you don't need God. Okay? You, you don't need God. You need culture. That is what you need. Okay? You need a good culture. I am very sure most of you come from certain cultures and most of the manners the morals that you have were transferred to you through your cultural settings so if anyone tells you that you need God to have good morals or manners therefore they are, they are lying you but wait you could use God okay and that God is going to look like this. It's going to be the God of morals. It's going to be a God of reward and punishment. And now this one this such a God 
that rewards you for behaving right or punishes you for misbehaving is not the God Okay? But a God. You guys understand? Yeah, sure. So you have to understand the difference. <coughs> the God who created the universe, who is the beginning of everything, does not operate with rewards and punishments. So religions, therefore, when they teach morals and manners, they are not teaching you about the good. Okay? They are they are they are sharing a good. So it is important for you to understand where religions come from when they emphasize morals and manners. They even have disciplines and penalties. So mm, if you have a congregation it. where there are disciplines and penalties for misbehaving, okay? Then you get to know that uh, a God worshipped there is not a God of sinners, but a God of saints. So religion is about morals and manners. And then people will call, okay, having good morals and manners, spirituality. Yeah? <laughs> this is what they will call this. If someone has good morals, okay, and manners, then they are spiritual. Then they are spiritual. They are closer to to God. Well, they are right because they are talking about a God, it's a small God, who requires sanctity for you to be closer to them. But the God who created the world, later who became incarnate and dwelt among us, and we named Jesus Christ, is a God of sinners, and is not a God of reward and punishment. Religion will teach you that if you misbehave and you have bad manners, you will go to hell. Okay? And if you have good morals and good manners, you will go to heaven. Isn't it? But you see, we've been reading the Bible there, and there are people who have behaved right, and they still need to be preached to the gospel so that they can be saved. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like in the book of Acts chapter 10, there's a guy known as Cornelius. Mm -hmm. He's even a God worshipper. So he's, he even behaves right. But uh, he still needs to be preached to. In other words, his manners and morals cannot take him to eternal life. Is that right? Mm -hmm. so, so it is important for us to understand that if you believe in these morals, and like keeping the Ten Commandments, it is so that you can appease God, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you're worshipping a God that needs to be appeased by how you behave, not the God that needs to save you from your failure. So this is the first hallmark of how you tell that you are in a religion and you are not in Christianity. And you don't believe the God, okay? But you believe a God. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, what religion teaches, what you go, it is, it is a picture that you, someone goes to church to learn how to behave. Then that demonstrates that this person lacks a culture. Because you can't go to church for morals and manners. You understand? Yes, it is, it is very unfortunate that most of us go to churches, mosques, or all those worship places to teach us how to behave. Okay? Yet, they are well-behaved atheists, people who do not believe in God. Okay? Have good morals and manners. In fact, there are some researches that demonstrate that God, God-believing communities, okay, have more crime than uh, Communities that do not believe God. So in other words, this is not a God thing. It is a cultural thing. But religion will tell you that this is a God thing. And God is going to judge you based on this. Eventually. So many people are behaving so that they can uh, win the judgment. 
First of all, I lived in a community yes. of majorly mm. pagans. Uh -huh. Most of them live in a, in an existence of an accent code. Yes. Who did the impact their life? They go to church, mm -hmm. and uh, but then these people behaved better than the Ugandans that lived. Uh -huh. Who believed in Who God? Believe in God. Uh -huh. Almost every guy that I know yes. believes in God. So, so it, 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 it matters <clears throat> that we start working on our, on our behavior. Okay? Mm. With or without God. Mm. Okay? Mm. Uh, so, religion, but religion will tell you that you cannot behave. Okay? Mm. Without, without God. And they are justified because they are after something. They want to, to teach a God. Not the God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Then there's a second one. Uh, the second M. That is materialism or money. Religion is about this. This M. Okay? Most people today go to worship places to get rich. Many churches, especially from the Pentecostal Realm, teach what they call the prosperity, the prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel. Well, I call it gospel, but they call it the gospel. That's not the gospel. Now, so many people go to worship places to prosper materialistically. And financially. Okay? Now, this is what religion teaches. But Christianity does not teach or tell anyone to come to church to get money. So there's nothing in that Bible like miracle money. Okay? Or there's nothing like you're going to church and then when you go to church or when you believe God, <coughs> you're going to be rich. Why? Because the God, not a God, the God who created the universe, all right, has already blessed this whole world with all the materialism that anyone needs. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you are in any worship place where you have to, to pray, to fast, to invest in form of seeding, okay? Then you get to know that you are face to face with the religion and a cult for that matter. That's what you're dealing with. So there, there is no scripture that I know, at least interpreted theologically in the Bible, that recommends that uh, if one wants to get rich, they should go to church. And then they get all the materialism that they need. The, the church is not uh, a financial ground, neither is the church an industry where we come and produce wealth. It's not. That is the same reason as why Jesus chased out those who are trading within the worship house. Because you can't trade into the worship house. It is the worship house. Okay? Not a place where we make uh, and, uh, and produce resources in, in any way. There are, so you, and I'm sorry, I'm, going, I'm also going to say this again. You don't need God. <laughs> okay? You don't need God to, to gain wealth. As some religions and pastors of yours have told you, you, you don't need God. For, for this. Why? Because under this, there are many wealthy people who believe God. Okay? And I can assure you that they are not wealthy because they believe God. They are wealthy because they are following the principles of economy and business. Do you guys understand? Mm. Yes. Mm. They are not wealthy because they believe God. They are wealthy because they follow the principles of the economy and that of business. They do the right things in this area. Therefore, they, 
they, they produce and reproduce the providence of God in nature because God has provided everything that we need for us to get welfare already. Okay? So, most of the prosperity preachers use the example of Abraham. But I'd like to stand here today and warn all believers around the world that before God met Abraham, before they met, isn't it? Abraham was a rich man. Mm. You understand? Mm. The only blessing that the gods gave Abraham was a child with Sarah who was barren. At least that is what is stated in the scriptures. The rest, as far as the resources and materials was concerned, Abraham was a rich man. For that matter, that's why he left his land and went to look for another land where he can settle with his wealth. <coughs> Abraham had an army of 300 soldiers in his family, in his household. Now, these were the guys who invaded others, okay, like all other Katorasuras did and took the spoils. You remember in Genesis chapter 14, mm -hmm. when he attacked over and captured over five king, kings? Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. That is Abraham for you. You remember when he visited King Abimelech, mm -hmm. and him and his wife had to lie? Yeah. In Genesis chapter 20. Yes. That is how you make money. <laughs> the, the principles now it's good that uh, today my, one of my financial instructors is here Francis Francis what, how, how, what are the four ways, are they four or three of accumulating wealth ways of accumulating wealth hey, there's that of inheritance then there's you know you, you, you can inherit the wealth you can inherit it okay you can make investments. You can invest. And the least one is you can you can you can work for investors. You can work for for investors. Yes, you can work for investors. That is employment. Eh? Employment, yeah. Okay. Employment. You get a pay and you accumulate wealth. Uh huh. Is there any other? The, the other one you can. Steal. You can steal. steal the yes, you can steal mm -hmm. the wealth. Now, now, whoever has told you that God blessed Abraham in the Bible, because many prosperity teachers teach that Abraham was blessed. Therefore, we are going to pass on the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. This is the blessing of Abraham. He got some from his father, Terra, Terra, mm -hmm. where he came from. Mm -hmm. He, that is inheritance. Yes. He invested mm -hmm. in creating a team of 300 fighters in his household. <laughs> you get the point? Uh -huh. He worked very hard. Abraham was a hard worker. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then finally, he stole. Like all other nomads do. So do not believe anyone who tells you that when you believe God, you are going to get money or you are going to be rich. I think next time I'll come back here and teach you what the Bible means by the term blessing. I'll be back and teach about blessings and curses. I'll, I'll be back. But for now I want you to understand that do not believe anyone who tells you that when you go to to, to a worship place, you have gone there to garner materials in and money. This is false. This is not what the God who created the universe expects us to, to, to believe. So please, dear believers in God, follow the economic principles and the business rules. Okay? For you to garner all the wealth. Stop fasting and pray. <clears throat> okay? Reduce the fasting and praying. Alright? Seeding, giving money to your church pastor is not an investment. The business people will tell you there is no economy in the church. There is no way you can give 
$10,000 to your pastor and then expect that $10,000 to multiply. There are principles and rules of multiplication. Do you guys understand? Mm. Uh -huh. so, so do not believe any, any religious person who tells you that they are going to, to prosper you. In fact, religions prosper themselves. That is why all religious institutions are wealthy. It is you. When they tell you that you come and <coughs> prosper, they are just inviting you to prosper them. And by the way, <laughs> religious institutions take money yes. from mostly the poor. Yes. Among yes. Because they want to prosper religion. They want you to prosper religion. Mm -hmm. So you, the more you give your money to your pastor, you're religion prospering. Religion prospers, eh? Yes, religion prospers. You're prospering your pastor. It is not you who is prospering. In fact, when you attend an ordinary Pentecostal church or any other religious worship place, and you focus on those who are giving testimony that the Lord has worked for them, you investigate the lives of those people, you'll find out that these are the characters that have followed the rules of the economy. Mm. Okay? Mm. They are working very hard. They are, they are, they are, some have inherited the wealth. They come from rich families. Others are, 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 are investing in that. You know, they, they, are, they are doing the right things in the right way at the right time. That is why every Sunday they come and testify. The prayer warriors on the, on the other side are continuing in prayer and in poverty. So drop this, this aim. You're not going to get money. There is no miracle money. There's nothing like miracle money. It's not there. There's a process for garnering all the wealth that you need. Process. Is that okay? There's a process. And that process should be followed. We cannot violate the, the laws of the universe and expect to, you know, to get away with it and get what we want. So this is the second aim. But here is my money. This is religion. Okay? This is what religion wants you to believe, which is false. Which is false. Okay, now, uh, there is now the, the magic and miracles. Okay? The magic and what? And miracles. Now, religion will tell you that there are some magical powers. When you come and worship with us, you'll have some magical powers, which will result in two miracles. And then you find people praying for a, for a miracle. First and foremost, what is a miracle? A miracle is something that happens without any contribution of a person in any kind. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. Something that happens without your participation. That's a miracle. Logically, you cannot pray for a miracle. And it qualifies as a miracle. Because prayer is your participation. Because when you pray for a miracle and it happens, that is a prayer request answered, not a miracle. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but religion wants you to believe in these magical powers, that they are, they are magical powers. You are somehow supernatural when you believe, okay, or stay with us. The sum of supernatural. But you see, even in the Bible, okay, when Moses was sent to Egypt to rescue the Israelites, uh, all the miracles that he performed there in, uh, in Egypt, okay, the sorcerers in Egypt performed the same and more. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. So, so dear religious people, stop duping people that uh, the miracles that you are performing in your religion, okay, are not performed by the gods elsewhere. You guys understand? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, Today, as I speak in Uganda, that's where I am, okay? Churches are competing with shrines as far as this issue is concerned. Who does more wonders and who is more magical? Okay? 
Now, now, most of the Ugandans now are resorting back to ATR. The African traditional religion, eh? they are resorting back to this ATR. Why? Because they can get the, the morals and manners from ATR. ATR preaches materialism and money. They have the gods that give you this. ATR is magical. In fact, some of the Pentecostal pastors are actually visiting these guys the to get the shrines, to get the powers to use in churches. This is what religion is about. S seducing you with, with magic, and once you get there, they start fleecing you and abusing you. Now, this magic, in the magic world here, this is where people worshippers do not worship the gods directly, but they worship the gods through the priests. Mm -hmm. Yes, they believe that there, there is some magical power in, uh, in the priest or in the pastor. Okay? The so-and-so is holy, therefore you have some magical powers. You've had the touch, not the anointed one. Because that anointing has some magic. Tap into the anointing. Then you tap into the anointing. Because when you tap into the anointing, there's, there's some magic here. Okay? Uh, 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 and then now they have the, the miracles. Now you, you have seen miracle center. You come for your miracle. You know, you, you've had the, the hula bar of miracles. Mm -hmm. yes, this, these are the gods. But you see what they are preaching is not different from what the ATR is preaching and teaching. All right. So, so religion is about magic and uh, and miracles. This is holy water. This is holy handkerchief. This is a holy scarf. All right. This is water. This is zamzam water from a certain stone in Arabia. Magic. And and this magic is going to perform wonders in your life. People want. People people are mesmerized by by miracles through magic. <laughs> yeah, they, are, they, are, they are running after this. This is what they want. So this is the third aim of, uh, of, uh, of religion. Alright? The third aim of, of religion. After that, no. So, so you have to be, to be careful with uh, a preacher who teaches from the Bible at least, uh, who is preaching miracles. Did Jesus perform miracles? Yes, he did. Okay, but it was not the only miracle worker. It is also important for people to understand that Jesus of Nazareth was not the only miracle worker in Palestine. There were many miracle workers. You remember the, the, the young lady that, uh, that Apostle Paul rebuked? Mm. He was said, these are men of God. Believe them, and then he rebuked her. You remember who that lady worked for? Simon the sorcerer? Yes, Simon the sorcerer was the contemporary of Jesus of Nazareth. He was solving the, the physical and the spiritual problems of, the, of their community. So Jesus used the miracles, okay, as, as an attraction gimmick for people to get to him so that he can preach to them. He didn't use miracles as the message. If your church or your pastor has turned miracles into the message, then that is a religion and that is a cult. Because Jesus never used miracles as the message. The miracles were not the message. The miracles were just an appeal. In fact, in John chapter 6, he performed many miracles, but, uh, but when they came back for miracles, he told them that, uh, Sister Dai performed a miracle of bread and fish, but now I am here to tell you that I am that bread. You, now, you are now supposed to eat me. They all walked away. Because they were after magic and miracles. Today, as we speak, there, 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 is, there, there is always an exodus from churches where there are no more miracles. Okay? Uh -huh. And another exodus to churches where there are miracles. And this does not stop with the Pentecostals only, but all other religions that you know, they are about this magic thing. And, 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 and miracles. Okay? Finally, Methodology. 
Re religion is, is, is about methodology. Now this is where you have the, the, the liturgy. Okay. The, the fundamental beliefs, you heard that. Or doctrines. Okay. Or dogmas. Okay, this this is where you have all this some of this methodology. Uh, church, church policy. Yes, the policy. Church tradition. The the of course the uh, church uh, tradition is under this policy. So so, so this is where you have all this the methodology. Now here you also have what 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 to eat and how to eat it. Diet. Dietary laws. Dress laws, marital laws, okay? You cannot marry someone outside us because they have the us, okay? Versus them, eh? mentality. So if you are in any, in any worship place where you have the us versus the mentality, and then you have data laws, you can't eat this dress, you can't dress like this, uh, you know, and uh, you can't marry so and so, all right? You are head to head with uh, with, with a religion or a cult. The methodology. Now, I need you to understand that uh, methodology is institutionalism. Okay, they they hide this institutionalism, which I call a principality. By the way, they hide it in what I call organizationalism. When you see things are structured and there's an organization, they they present to you the organization. They tell you that uh, things must be organized, isn't it? But that's not what they are saying. They are saying institutionalism. That's what they are saying. Okay, where the policies in here in this institutionalism, are not kind. They are not kind. If any minister in institutionalism defaults the system, the system will not remember how long this guy has served the, the, the institution. It will punish methodically this, this person. Institutionalism. This one is a principality. So whenever you see this methodology uh, as dogmatic, you are face to face with, uh, with, uh, with religion. Okay? Doesn't God have a method? Okay? He does, isn't it? Is it dogmatic? Is it doctrinal? Doesn't it bend? then God is not institutionalism. For that matter, that is why Jesus never started an institution and never worked in an institution. Jesus worked outside the Jerusalem temple and he died outside it. He didn't join Judaism because he knew he was going to be restricted by institutionalism. Religion wants you to be part of this methodology, to register with them so that they can put you to church display, they can tell you what to eat, how to dress. Okay? Now, these are things that you can always get from here, culture. But religion will mystify all of these and turn them into religious. So you are not properly dressed. Okay? No. You are dressed like a person of God. Mm. Uh, you are not dressing. <laughs> you, you don't put on for the sake of dressing. No, you are, you are worshipping God, a God. So there is a godly attire. You dress to honor God. Uh, you, 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 you dress to honor God. You can't go on the pulpit dressed like this. This is why there, are, there, are, there is a dress code for ministers. Can't we have a scripture first? 
Yes, they have a scripture. Hey, yes, in everything you do. Yes, whether eating, yes. whether do it to yes. the Lord. Uh, uh huh. Which is also religion. Huh? Because having a scripture does not mean that the scripture is not religious as well. <laughs> it is very important for us to understand that even in the Bible there is a religion known as Judaism. Okay? So, so you have to understand that. Okay? Because the same Paul who says that in 1 Corinthians, uh, that is 10, 30, 31, is the same Paul that says in Romans 14 that let no one judge any other in matters of food and grace, isn't it? Uh -huh. So, you get to see how Paul is is trying. He's trying to balance the boat, speaking to religious people, teaching them how to dress. Because you can use religion, okay, to teach people manners. But you have to remind them that, that, that manners are all morals uh, are, not a are not a religious concept. And they, uh, no, they are. They are religious, religious concept, but are not a divine <coughs> concept. You understand? Mm. So who had a question? Mm. <coughs> Uh, you've not talked about belief. Does a belief feature anywhere in religion? Is it, <laughs> it is not. It is not an end. That's why I said that we we'll talk about the the three B's, the three B's yes. uh, which are belief, belonging, and behavior. Now, these ones serve as a sociology of religion. Of religion. How do I join a religion? You, we first preach to you this. Okay? So, the belief that you're asking about, you believe that morals and manners, okay, are for God and they operate under reward and punishment. You believe that you can go to, to your God is the one who is going to give you money, whether you work or not. You believe in magic and miracles. Okay? And you believe in methodology. Now because you believe one, two, three, four M's, isn't it? You belong with us. Whoever doesn't belong, doesn't believe this, doesn't belong with us. <clears throat> you get the point? Mm -hmm. Now, because you belong with us after believing the four aims, okay, mm -hmm. you behave like us. When you don't behave like us, we either discipline you or excommunicate you and chase away from our sociology. So religion is not about difference. Religion is about sameness. Whatever is not like us is against us. It is homo, not hetero. Uh -huh. you, you understand? And so, so that is the whole theme of, of religion. Now, these four aims disqualify religion to be about the God that created the universe and qualify them to be preaching a God. And you need to find out which God is governing your religion. Is that all right? Sure. If there is any other question, I'd like to. Stop there. May God bless you. Mm -hmm. yeah.